Welcome to Raised in Alaska and the first winter camping trip of the season. I've been looking forward to this trip for months, but I also know that from season to season, whenever you read gear for a new season, part of it is, do I have all the stuff that I need for this to be successful? And, and for winter camping, I guess the first thing you ought to have is you better have a tent that you can put a stove in, you better have the stove, you better have a sleeping bag. And after that, the rest become luxuries. So that said, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have all the gear that you need. And this first trip of the season is going to help you determine what you forgot. Kind of the second thing going into the season to think about is just familiarizing yourself with all of the processes and the easy gear setup that's necessary so that you don't have to spend extended periods of time in the cold. Once you commit to, I'm going to set up my tent now, it's going to be a cold endeavor and there is nowhere to warm up until you get your tent set up. It's probably about 20 degrees today. Maybe colder than that, maybe single digits. It's cold. And so I'm getting my final kind of layers on here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit, hit the trail here, and I'll show you parts of the trail as we go along. Okay, so we're on a river right now. This is frozen, but this is actually the Iditarod Sled Dog Race Trail that we're on. This is actually the Big Sioux is what the name of this river is. And so we're going to go up the Big Sioux a little ways, and then um, we'll go up a different river in a bit. The other thing about this trip is just kind of the mental preparation for solo camping in a remote area kind of sort of has a way of getting into your head. Even though I've been out a lot by myself and I've been remote by myself a lot, when you're out there in the middle of nowhere, weird things start to creep into your head. You know, will I be overcome by carbon monoxide in the middle of the night with my stove? Is there something outside? Is something gonna go wrong? My snow machine break down, my tent get broken, the wind come up and blow my tent over when when my stove is going in the middle of the night. There's all these weird little things, these doubts, if you will, that find their way into the back of your head that just kind of mess with you. And so the more you go out in a season, the more you get used to that and the more that you can beat those doubts down. But the first trip always seems like it has those doubts that resurface. Okay, I've drove my snow machine back and forth across here from two different directions. I'm gonna set up my tent right there. I got my cargo net off. You can tell the sun, I'd like to say it's setting, but it never really came up today. So I'm gonna get busy here because we don't have a whole lot of daylight left. All right, the first thing I've done is unload my sled because underneath that tarp, I have some boards that I'll put out and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So I got my board set up in an H and I use that cot to measure how far apart to put them because I want the cot to rest on that once my tent's set up. And then the two that go this way here, the walkway in between the cots. It's easiest to put the poles up first and then hook the tent up to it afterwards. So this is my wood stove. This is really what makes camping when it's super cold pretty bearable. 
And so I have it in this box and I use the lid here with the stove on it. Hopefully. Now everything for the stove is inside the stove. Put the box right there and I'll fill it with the wood later on. Pick that up. I'm just getting ready to cut my wood. Well, for dinner tonight, and this is gonna be almost funny. I brought some pizza. I'm gonna warm it up on top of my stove here. I know it's kind of like cheating, isn't it? Anybody who's watching this YouTube video probably watches other videos. I know I watch a lot of YouTube videos and one person that I like to watch is a lady named Alone. And she moved up to Alaska, I want to say from California. Maybe it was from Denver. But um, she bought a cabin out in the middle of nowhere and is living by herself out there and kind of making a go of it. And she's a really fabulous cook and she cooks these gourmet meals. And recently for the holidays, she was cooking like gourmet treats kinds of things. And she challenged me to cook something um, I think that she was thinking it would be some kind of cool sweet treat thing, which I did do, but I'm not going to show you that in this video. And so for alone, I know this isn't quite what you had in mind and this isn't um, the gourmet food that you make, but um, this is what I'm going to have for tonight. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description on this video just for fun. I did make a special little treat that I used to make for my kids when they were younger. Um, and I will bring that out. I made it at home to bring out on a camp on a camping trip I didn't bring it on this trip though, but I will show that a little bit later on And so if that heats all the way through I'm gonna put this skillet on there like that And I'll kind of make it into a little oven. Hopefully We'll see how that goes now, Let's see Ooh, that's hot. Well, we'll let that one do a little bit longer. You can see that one's steaming. Well, it's quite a haul to get out here. The problem right now really is that we're just probably two weeks past the solstice. And so the days are really, really short. The winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. I think the sunrise now now is at like 10 a.m. And sunset is at 4 p.m. So we get about six hours of sun. And it's really indirect light. The sun just kind of gets over the horizon and scoots along the horizon. You don't get that high direct sun. Um... And so it doesn't really get super, super bright during the day. And like today, we had some cloud cover. And so I didn't really feel like the sun ever came up. But 
it was light enough that you could see well and so the sun was up it was just that it was covered in clouds tomorrow we'll get up early well not early we'll sleep in as long as we want because it doesn't really get light it'll start getting light about 8 30 or 9 but it doesn't really get very bright until about sunrise and so we'll be able to sleep in goof around one really cool thing that I'm going to experiment with on this trip is I have some night vision binoculars that I brought with me. And so I'm going to go out when it's dark and look with my night vision binoculars and look around. And they actually have a, a video um, recorder in, in them. And so I'll be able to take some video clips with my night vision binoculars. So I'll share those later this evening. That should be pretty cool, I think. Well, I just got a fire going. It should warm up here pretty quickly. It's probably at least in single digits out here. I'm going to crawl back in my sleeping bag here in a minute and stay warm until it warms up in here. Well, it's warmed up enough in here to get out of my cot. It's not bad in here, actually. So you can't even see my breath. Oh, my water's frozen on the top. Let's see that. and they're frozen and not frozen. Must be three quarter of an inch thick of ice in there. So that will thaw out maybe today. We'll see. Well, that's better. And so that'll take a while to boil. At the same time, I think I'm gonna get breakfast kind of going here. This is going to be interesting. So I'm going to put my skillet up on two pieces of kindling so that it's not doesn't have direct heat to it and make a little oven. I'll put this on top of it there to keep the heat in. And before I left home, I made some breakfast burritos and I wrapped them in tin foil. And so I'm gonna put those in here. Put the lid on that. And that'll probably, I'll bet they're frozen solid. In fact, here's my taco sauce that I brought and it is frozen solid as well. So we'll put it there and hopefully it'll thaw out. I'll bet that probably takes an hour, just guessing, but it's gonna take a while, so. All right, my water's boiling, so I'll get coffee started. It's funny how your mind plays tricks on you. I've been out and done this same kind of thing dozens and dozens of times. And a little bit ago, I was laying in my cot and heard a noise outside. And I listened, 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 and first I thought, well, that's a moose, probably, and I'm going to, so I thought, well, this would be a really cool time to take my night vision binoculars out and take a look at it. And then I listened a little bit more, and it's like, well, I don't think it's a moose. And then somehow I convinced myself that maybe it was a grizzly bear that it undenned. They all should be denned up right now. And maybe it's a grizzly bear, so I better not go out, which would be wise, by the way. And then I was listening, and I thought I heard it in more than one place. And I thought, well, maybe it's some wolves out there, so I'm not going to go out for that either. And I kept listening and listening, and I convinced myself that there's an animal out there, and I'm still not convinced that there was not. I don't know. 
<coughs> but the wind came up and blew my tent and I have my rain fly open and it made a noise and I thought, well, maybe that's the noise I heard. And I would have swore the noise that I was hearing was actually footprints in the snow, but I'm not certain. And then I heard it real close to the tent and my tent shook. And I thought, well, it's probably a moose that rubbed up against my tent, but where my tent is right now, there's no moose food anywhere around here. So there's no reason a moose would be hanging out here. They might pass through and that would be kind of cool, but there's no reason they would just hang out out there. But maybe it was just the, the tent rustling in the wind. There's not a lot of wind right now. There's zero wind, but there was maybe a little bit of wind then because it would, it would move my rain fly. I don't know. And so once it gets good and light, I'd have one out and looked. I waited till the first snow machine went by and I figured if it was wolves or something hanging out, snow machine would run it off. And so once it gets light, I'll go out and look around and see if I can see anything in the snow. I did also go out just a little bit ago, start up my snow machine and run it around and put a, um, a GoPro out behind my tent so I can get a time-lapse sunrise. The sunrise looks pretty nice this morning. But if there's, if there's lots of, of footprints or something around, we'll still see them. But, um, We'll see how that goes. That'll be interesting. So I'm going to let my finish, my coffee finish here. I can't wait to try these burritos out. This is an idea I've had for a while. It seems simple, right? Lots of people make burritos and put them in their freezer and then take them out when they want them or breakfast burritos and take them out, you know, early in the morning. So it should be just fine. And this little oven trick should be just, should work out fine. And so we'll check that out in a little bit here, but I can let my coffee finish up and then we'll get back to you. Well, this has been going probably 10 minutes. It should be done. It's warm enough in here. I opened up my window here and I have the vestibule open so I can see the sunrise. That's kind of a cool little benefit here. Let's see how my breakfast burritos look. Chicken, eggs, and potato. A little bit more adventure, and it looks like it's gonna be a really nice day to be out on the trail. It's nice when the sun is high enough, when you have sun and not just massive cloud cover. When you have enough sun, it makes it so that you have shadows on the snow, wherever there's a dimple in the snow or a ripple in the snow, there'll be shadow cast off from it. And so you can see the texture of the trail as opposed to like yesterday when I came in, we had a lot of cloud cover. And so you, so the cloud cover makes it so that there's not really any shadows. And so everything just looks flat. And so you have to go pretty slow, but it looks like today should be a nice day for riding. Pretty gorgeous morning here. This morning when my hot sauce was frozen, I put it up here. I have up here, there's um, lofts. So you can put all your gear there so it dries out and stuff. Like I take the inside of my boots out, I have a liner in them, and I put them up there overnight so that they dry out. Well, I put my hot sauce up there and now it's all thawed out. So that's nice. Nobody wants frozen hot sauce. So after breakfast, we'll probably clean up the inside of this thing and inside of the tent fold up all the cots, get the sleeping bag put away, roll up the air mattress and get all that done um, and move that stuff outside. Then and then um, we'll take a look at the trail on the way out. There has been a fair amount of overflow that's refrozen. What overflow is, is when, when you get ice and then the ice either cracks or water comes up through, or in this case, we got probably three feet of snow or four feet of snow out there. And so that's a lot of weight. And so it's constantly pushing down on it. So any crack or, or anything that happens in the ice, or it might even push the ice down hard enough to crack it. And then the water flows up through it. And then the water will refreeze on top first. I mean, 
the worst case scenario is you have three feet of snow that insulates things and you have water below it and you don't know it's there and you get into it riding your snow machine you get stuck it's kind of like mud really for a four-wheeler um, um, but a lot of this on the trail and in places like that you can see where the water's went through, dissolved the snow, and then refrozen as ice. And so there's a lot of ice along here. And, there, and so today we'll look at some open water and we'll also look at some overflow. I don't know that we'll always be able to tell what caused the overflow, but it's good to see it and kind of know what it is. And and then also if it, it's been, it got cold last night. So anything, any overflow that happened overnight is frozen now. But it's good to know that when you spot overflow, then you know, oh, okay, this is frozen. What's it look like over there where the snow hasn't been touched? I mean, if you have three feet of snow and there's water on the bottom of it, but there's exposed, like the trail has exposed where the overflow is and it freezes, it could be, the water still could be water underneath that snow because the snow insulates it from freezing. And so you always have to be really mindful of that and careful because you don't want to get out pounding out in the pow pow and then all of a sudden be stuck in a bunch of slush. That would be um, not favorable. Okay, before I take this tent down, I'll take a quick little look inside here. Got two cots. I was gonna have a guest. I was gonna spend a couple days and maybe get somebody, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Stove, coffee. I use underneath the cots for storage. Makes life kind of easy. So I'm squeezing the air out of my air mattress, the easiest way to do it. This has also foam in it. And so the easiest way is to do one little roll and then put your knees on it so you got your full weight on it. Okay, I haven't really inspected around my tent yet to see if there's anything here last night. If there was, it was in this deep snow, it would for sure show. And they would have had to, unless, they, unless something came right up my snow machine tracks, they would have had to come across that snow. So we're going to look on the snow machine tracks, some of which I've already drove on this morning. You can see nothing broke that snow anywhere. I think that's my footprint probably. That's fine. If it would have been a moose, it would have been post holing pretty good. So, you know, I think that would be obvious. And so if it was a wolf, then we'd see dog prints here somewhere. Big dog prints. I think those are all my tracks from yesterday. Nothing's breaking. Something went across there. Let's see what that is. And I drove on this already this morning here. But you can see nothing broke this big snow here. And I find it hard to believe, well, something could have just walked only on my snow machine tracks. Those tracks right here going across there are not fresh, I would say. So I'm going to say at this point in time, it's probably safe to say paranoia got the best of me. are all mine and I haven't walked back here today and that's all my tracks from yesterday obviously nothing there this is all me from yesterday yeah I'm gonna say as much as I hate to be a baby I think I was just paranoid that's me I don't know what that is but I'm gonna say I don't think that that's tracking an animal, and this is probably from me yesterday, and nothing around to the front. So I think it's safe to say, don't let paranoia get the best of you. One simple lesson that can be taken away from my paranoia is put more guy wires on your tent. For this trip, I only put three guy wires on my tent, and realistically, I only staked down two of them, and so the wind could make my tent kind of flop in the wind 
And so more guy wires would secure my tent better. And also if I zip my rain fly shut, then that can't rustle. So that might be a simple, simple fix. So this is overflow. You can see that water came through the ice and then it's refroze. But it makes you wonder, you know, what's down this way and what's down this way. So you just kind of want to be careful when you get to those kinds of places. Well, it looks like somebody got caught in the water there. If they made it out on their own, I bet they felt pretty darn lucky. That's exactly what you don't want to get into. So this entire trip is all along frozen rivers. You can see the sun setting there still. River bank there. As I look back on this trip and think about how it went just in terms of setup and takedown, I for the most part remembered everything I needed to take with the exception of a couple of 10 foot bungee strap, straps I have to help secure my sled. And most certainly the food on this trip was pretty simplistic and lots of times, especially when the days are longer, it's nice to have more complicated food and things that take a little bit longer to make because you're going to be out there for several hours and so it's nice to have a really kind of gourmet hot meal but for this trip simple was really the theme for the day <laughs> Well, thanks for watching. This was a pretty fun adventure. Um, it's really my first winter camping and I'll tell you, I'm way too early. The days are so short right now. If you wait another six weeks or so, you'll get eight hours of light or at least six hours of light. Right now, there's just not enough light. You get out, you set everything up, don't have time to do anything, get up in the morning, have coffee, um, pack your stuff up basically. And so pretty quick trip. I look forward to going back out in a few weeks when the days are longer. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the trail.